take me home tonight. Good morning, Paul oh. Linden, the morning update, and I bring you good news from scientists at the National Institute of Aging. They figured out how we can lose weight, get smarter, and live longer. The bad news is you have to fast every other day to do it. Dr. Mark Matson, head of the lab where this new research on alternative day fasting was done, and Dr. You say this is the way humans were intended to eat? You know, our current way of eating is based more on um, social interactions than science in terms of health effects. And if we think about this in evolutionary terms, our genes are geared for eating intermittently. Our ancestors not too long ago weren't able to eat three square meals a day, and it's clear we can go long periods without food. And it turns out during relatively short time periods without food of, say, 12, 24 hours or so, what happens is that during that time, cells in our body undergo mild stress. They respond by improving their ability to cope with more severe stress and resist disease. Losing weight and, and staying uh, trim, an obvious benefit, but what makes it uh, so that we can boost brain power and possibly extend lifespan with, with this kind of eating uh, diet? There are two main effects with regard to aging processes and age-relating diseases. One is reduced levels of free radical damage to molecules in our cells, and the other is reduced inflammation, which seems to be play a role in, in many different age-related diseases. Then specifically for the brain, what we found in my lab is that intermittent energy restriction increases the production of what we call nerve cell growth factors. And as the name implies, they promote the growth, but also the, the survival of nerve cells. And that seems to, in our animal models, definitely uh, has a beneficial effect, for example, in animal models of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. Is there a downside to this other than the difficulty of fasting every other day? So far, we haven't found a downside. Some work on energy restriction in animals does suggest that there may be reduced wound healing, and but that's about it. Cardiovascular system, our glucose regulation is improved. Gastrointestinal system works better. My answer is that at this point, no. For elderly people who are, are losing weight, this is uh, not a good idea. So this is geared more towards young and middle-aged people who are either healthy or, or particularly overweight people. Has it been tested on humans, uh, this restricted diet? Yes. We, we've published two studies. Uh, one where the subjects, asthma patients, Every other day, they ate only 500 calories. Over a period of weeks to two months, their asthma symptoms improved, their function of their lungs improved, and markers of oxidative stress and inflammation were down. The other study was a study in women at risk for breast cancer. In that study, we had the subjects two consecutive days a week. They ate only 600 calories. The other five days, they ate whatever they want. Multiple indicators of health improved, including Glucose regulation, lipid profiles, blood pressure went down, and they lost weight. Do you expect this to have a major impact on our society? I mean, to me, and, and a person who's fought weight battles forever, this seems like a major breakthrough. How does it feel to you? I think it remains to be seen. It, it, what it comes down to, as you know, is it's, um, it's hard to stay on a diet. And if this kind of diet is easier for people to stay on, it could have a big impact. We found in our two studies that I mentioned that psychologically the, the subjects were able to keep on the diet for up to six months or more. Some of them are still on the diet because psychologically they know if today or the next two days I don't eat much and can eat what I want the rest of the week, I can get through this next day or two. Dr. Mark Matson, he's Chief of Laboratory and Neurosciences at the National Institute on Aging and the man behind this research. Doctor, thanks for explaining to us in Portland this morning. You're welcome and have a good day.